this, let's talk about the extras. We also consider the extras for the system. Each of the loop meters combines several measurement functions in one for loop. Typically, those instruments are designed to measure resistance, current, and voltage. Traditionally, the type of loop meter used in this video is used to be a duty to measure temperatures or the rate of small pixels of distress as the voltage from the first forward bias diode. Asked about what has to be considered in buying a loop voltage meter and comments about the key quality of the device you hear with hello at the end of the video. There are three plug-in connectors at the front side of this loop meter. The black SD has to be joined with the middle connector and the red SD with the right one. The left track is for high current measurements, which will be seen in some later in this video. Electric energy is needed to power the electricity display and the electronics. Hence, a 9 volt battery is placed inside of the loop meter. When the weather device is not in use, Connect the multimeter from the battery by pressing the rotary switch to complete the off. Let's start with resistance measurements in the system carbon filter feature. The rotary switch has a red reading while a gray reading for resistance measurements is marked by the beep and the omega, which is the symbol of ohm, the derived unit of electrical resistance. When using the direct method of resistance measurements, the constant current is generated by the internal battery which connects to the back beep at the multimeter, and the logic processor is applied under less stress to the resistance value. The available range frequencies are 2 mega ohm, 300 and 20 were previously 2 kilo ohm and 300 ohm. When determining the resistance of an unknown device, we should start with the highest range possible, which is 2 mega ohm. The test series consists of 6 transistors with 1 mega ohm, 220, 27 and 2.7 kilo ohm, 390 and 10 ohm, a 1 mega ohm potential meter, and finally a series of metal wire. The color code indicates the resistance value and the tolerance of the actual carbon filter feature. Let's start with the 1 mega ohm resistor. After connecting the back beep with the middle terminals of the resistor, a value of 0.992 can be read on the display. Since the 2 mega ohm range is selected, the measured value is 0.992 mega ohm. The severity of the testing voltage generated by the multimeter is irrelevant when determining the resistance of ohmic resistors. Hence, we get the same values as scattering capacity. Before recording the value of the potential meter, the device returns to its maximum position and we get 0.871 mega ohm. According to the labels, the resistance of those devices should be 1.00 mega ohm, a currency it isn't. The reason for the deviation will be seen in some later in this video. For the 220 kilo ohm resistor, we get 0.319 mega ohm, and for the 27 kilo ohm resistor, 0.037 mega ohm. The rotary switch can be set to the 200 kilo ohm range to get a more precise reading of the resistance value. Now the display reading is 27.0 according to a value of 27.0 kilo ohm, which is more precisely scored as a decimal place. When setting the 20 kilo ohm range, a single one is displayed, indicating that the measured value is too large for the selected range. Choose the smallest range possible to ensure getting the highest precision of the reading. The resistance value in all other resistors is determined in the same way. Of 
Dios is the ninety meter or one millimeter, and the length of the document will be twenty meters, which will be two centimeters. We get one point five ohm, which is very high for this piece of wire. So let me join the next piece of the multimeter. The expected value is zero point zero ohm, but we get one point zero ohm. One reason for this curious value is the contact position of the head piece. Another one is the low position of the multimeter when measuring low resistance devices. The next less curious piece is different voltages. There is 6 volt battery, a computer power supply with output voltages of 12, 5 and 3.2 volts and finally a multiple transformer of a model railway. Voltage is always measured between two points in a system. Usually common reference connection bisects the ground of the system fields at one of the points and the next head piece is connected to that point. The difference in connection between the reference point and the connection at the tip of the red head piece is indicated by the multimeter. When doing voltage measurements you have to know whether it is DC or AC voltage. The voltage output of the battery and the computer power supply is unidirectional, hence the road voltage has to be set to that functionality. Before starting the measurement, dice are highly stressed available whenever an unknown voltage is present. The road voltage can be set to a lower range after connecting the head piece to the voltage source. We get a reading of 6.34 volts at the battery. When prepping the head piece, we get a value of minus 6.33 volts. In contrast to resistance measurements, the arrangement of the head piece matters when recording DC voltages. Because of the significance of the polarity, there are markings for the positive and negative terminal at the battery and the displayed value of the multimeter is positive whenever the next head piece is connected to the negative terminal of the battery. Thus, the negative terminal of the battery is also known as ground. The negative terminal at the computer power supply is marked by black wires, hence the black head piece should be connected to one of the black wires of that voltage source. Between the black and one of the orange wires we get plus 3.40 volts. Between the black and one of the red wires plus 5.10 volts. And finally between the black and one of the yellow wires plus 11.98 volts. Prepping the head piece results in displaying negative values. DC voltages are always indicated in reference to the potential at the black head piece. computer power supply we get a voltage of plus 1.69 volts between one of the orange and one of the red wires, plus 6.87 volts between one of the red and the yellow wires, and finally plus 8.57 volts between an orange and a yellow wire respectively minus 8.54 volts between a yellow and an orange wire. Whenever a negative value is displayed, the negative pole is at the red head piece, otherwise it is at the black one. Before assembling an electronic circuit to a DC voltage source, we should check for the right polarity, or else the circuit will choke up. At an AC voltage source, the output voltage periodically reverse the polarity very quickly, as the transformer shown here, at the first 100 times a second. When attaching the head piece to the transformer while the road voltage is set to DC voltage, the displayed value should be stable. We can reach values around 0 volts, independently from the position of the transformer's actuator. That's the mean value of a unit 
so we could have just rewarded it. On a parallel new sub orbit to the Earth system, we can see from zero volts ranging from plus 25 volts to minus 25 volts. Therefore, a C voltage is often characterized by the root U square value. The RMS is a statistical measure of magnitude of a Riemann quantity. That's all about the theory of root U square for now. The AC voltage is rectified by the multimeter and the root U square value is displayed. To enable that function, you must set the root U switch to an AC voltage range. Now you can read the RMS voltage output of the transformer. As explained before, the polarity of the AC voltage alters very quickly and the multimeter rectifies that voltage. Thus, the value doesn't change when setting the test speed. When doing measurements at an AC voltage while the root U switch is set to AC voltage, the rooting is significantly higher than the true value. And you should always have an eye on the correct setting of the root U switch. in the sensing can not only be detected at a voltage source, but also across the device in its connected circuit. To do so, the multimeter has to be connected in parallel to the device under test. The circuit shown here is composed of a filament lamp, a diode, a 1 kilo ohm resistor and a battery. When connecting the multimeter in parallel to the filament lamp, you get a value of plus 11.55 volts with the positive terminal at the right side of the lamp. When connecting the test feed to the terminals of the resistor, you get an almost identical value of plus 11.52 volts, which is remarkable because the resistor is fixed in parallel to the filament lamp. Across the diode you get plus 0.82 volts and finally the voltage output of the battery is plus 12.32 volts. When using a multimeter with the root U switch set to voltage measurement, a device is also named volts meter. The next functionality to be treated is current measurement. When using a multimeter with the root U switch set to current measurement, the device is also named ammeter. There are four different ranges suitable for detecting direct current. 2, 20 and 203 ampere respectively 10 ampere. To enable the range above 203 ampere and up to 10 ampere, the red test feed has to be connected to the left stack of the multimeter. In principle, the current measurement is a voltage measurement. The current pass is a resistor of actuation known resistance and the detected voltage drop across the device is said to be the reported current value. The higher the current, the lower the sensing resistance becomes, which the resistor in return detects in the measurement, as we will see some later. For measurements above 203 ampere, there is a wire stretch placed between the middle and the left stack of the multimeter. That measures low resistance path is named punch resistor. The construction allows the current to bypass the final contact of the road U switch. Closed spin strip conductors would not withstand currents above 1 ampere. To be able to measure currents, the multimeter has to be fixed in series with a twice hour circuit to be discovered. The circuit must be opened to insert the multimeter. Same as for resistance and voltage measurements, the detection of current should start with the highest range possible. Thus, the road U switch has to be set to the 10 ampere range and the red test feed must be connected to the left stack to enable the high current punch. As seen at the circuit, we connect to the battery, we can detect a current of 0.82 amperes coming through the multimeter. The resistor and the 
legitimate land outlook in parallel. To be able to determine the corresponding QV in future, the multimeter has to be inserted into the important black or the third grid. We can read the value of plus 0.01 ampere. Thus we can see the lower range to get a more precise QV. In order to enable the lower range, the red track is said to be removed from the left and blue inserted in the right track and the red group is said to be set to the 203 ampere range. After reconnecting the circuit to the battery, we get 11.6 mA. Thus, we can step down to the 20 mA range. When doing current measurements, you should disconnect the circuit under test from the power supply before turning the road tool switch. During this over procedure, the current running through the road tool switch of the multimeter is interrupted for a short span of time, which can cause a high voltage peak because of the switch is not yet complete to put the updates in the circuit under test. In the lower range, we get a more precise QV of 11.49 mA. When doing direct current measurements, the severity of the test peak is relevant. When stretching the test peak, we get minus 11.50 mA. The current is running through the multimeter in the opposite direction. this position of the road tool switch, the multimeter can determine a direct current range from 0 to 23 ampere. A current peak is being yet indicated in alternating currents. But remember the diode design of the circuit. The current passes this device and leaves one direction, hence the current can be rectified. By inserting a second diode, the current can pass the circuit in both directions. Expected is the indication value is around 0 mA now. This multimeter has an OPL green function for detecting an alternating current. Now that we have learned how to determine currents and voltages, we can do some indirect resistance measurements. The resistor to be discovered is attached to an adjustable direct current source with a maximum voltage output of 12 volts, which is not applicable to human life, and with the help of the first multimeter, a current running through the device is determined. With a second multimeter, the voltage drop across the resistor can be determined simultaneously. The ohmic resistance is calculated using Bayes' law. Once again, the carbon gate resistors with an N of 390 ohm, and 220 kilo ohm as well as the 1 meta ohm device are used for the test period. At this arrangement of two multimeters there are considerable deviations while examining a high resistive device. The inner impedance of a real voltmeter is high but not infinite. Consequently, an additional current is running through that multimeter, bypassing the resistor and being added up to the current running through the ammeter. We can measure that current with a third multimeter during this trip period through the voltmeter. While testing the 1 mega ohm resistor, a current of 0.0123 ampere is running through the voltmeter, which is approximately half the total current. When subtracting this value from the total current, we get 0.011 mA running through the resistor, and the calculated value is much closer to the expected resistance. The smaller the resistance of the device under test, the lower the input current, and when using the 390 ohm resistor is enough to test it with it. available, we can use another circuit. Of course, the ammeter is still switched in series with the resistor, but the voltmeter is by now connected in parallel to both devices. Yet, there is still a current running through the voltmeter, bypassing the resistor, but that current is not detected by the ammeter, because in that experiment it bypassed too. There is considerable 
that he's made to why he's kept his wife. He doesn't know who he gives these brand new gifts and arrangements to all because he's too good. Like we played before, the turn is the action taken more than the swap because the next duration and all the resistance stays inside the loop meter. That inner resistance of the up meter is small but never zero. Thus, there is a seasonal resistance with the superior seasonal resistor under test. By the volt meter, the voltage swap across the up meter is acting up to that across the unknown resistor to be tested. The voltage swap across the up meter can be measured with a third multimeter. This means 20 seconds voltage measurement can be made in parallel to the up meter. The voltage swap across the up meter has to be confronted from the value displayed by the first multimeter, by what the resulting resistance becomes more precisely. The voltage swap across the up meter is 0.187 volts compared to a total voltage of 0.312 volts that can be the ten volt resistor. For the one meter ohm device we get a ratio of 1.33 volts to 11.48 volts. Thus the voltage swap across the up meter is negligible. And even in a manual measurement of current and voltage, circuit 1 is measurable as low resistive device, while circuit 2 is in need when testing high resistive device. Let's replace the resistor of the circuit by multimeter number 3 to determine the inner resistance of that instrument. As the first run, the multimeter is set to do 3 volts measurement. Default view the inner resistance will be very high, so we choose measurement arrangement number 2 is useful. The resulting resistance is approximately 600 kilo ohm at the 200 millivolt range and 1 mega ohm at all other DC voltage ranges. Now the multimeter is set to current measurement using circuit readings of the ammeter functionality with the help of circuit number 1. The resulting resistance is approximately 1.2 ohms at the 200 mA range, 10.3 ohms at the 20 mA range, and 100.6 ohms at the 2 mA range. When switching one multimeter to a resistance measurement, we can determine the inner resistance of the second multimeter directly. We get 100.6, 10.6, respectively 1.5 ohms for the ammeter functionality at the 2, 20 and 200 mA range. When switching to voltage functionality, we get approximately 1 mega ohm at all ranges. There is a remarkable deviation from the indirect method at the 200 mV range. The same deviation was determined in the first version of this video recording more than one year ago, thus I can excuse a measurement error. Many success for those curious values. Let's check the voltage output of the multimeter when testing resistance functionality. A 6 kilo ohm carbon pin for the multimeter is connected to the back of the right multimeter, which operates as ohm meter. As soon as the left multimeter, which is set to do 3 voltage measurement, is connected in parallel to the potentiometer, it will do plus 0.613 volts as a display, and keep the positive terminal of the ohm meter inside the right channel. We indicate its resistance value in 6.14 kilo ohm. And lowering the resistance of the potentiometer, the voltage output of the ohm meter is increasing and at a resistance of 4.33 kilo ohm we get 0.77 volts. And finally 0.147 volts at a resistance of 3.84 kilo ohm. We get the semi-linear correlation. The displayed resistance value in kilo ohm is approximately 27 times the indicated voltage. At small resistance 
value is the vector in which we take out the frequency term which means because we get the voltage of 0.079 volts we get the voltage of 1.8 kilo ohm we can determine the voltage of 1.86 kilo ohm at the lower range of 1.2 kilo ohm and we can reach 1.854 kilo ohm at the voltage of 1.61 volt the voltage of second upwise semiconductor will be in the lower range the vector between the two states the frequency kilo ohm and the voltage output of the ohm meter also stays after dying in the lower range with now slightly above one now the multimeter is connected in series to the potentiometer to measure the measurement of current contrast with the voltage output of the ohm meter, the current is almost kept on a constant level. But until the voltage of the potentiometer becomes very low, the current is increasing noticeably. Setting the ohm meter to a lower range, the current is stepping up series. The multimeter measures the voltage, but after the constant current field is right under F, the state in which we take the voltage drops and corresponds to the voltage value. The vector speed of the current depends on the dial's measurement range. The lower the range, the higher the current passes through the device under F. By using a total of three multimeters, we can determine the current and the voltage generated by the ohm meter simultaneously. The display reading of the ohm meter performs effectively through the values formulated in the state law. Looks like the ohm meter is compensating with slightly derived current. But the congruent is still not perfect. There is still one question. How reliable are the display values of the multimeter? Now all three multimeters are connected in parallel to a voltage source. The system in the central applied to each pair of test tubes is identically and all three devices should display the same reading. As you can see, they don't. If the rotary switch is set to increase the voltage measurement, the accuracy of this type of multimeter is given as 0.5% for reading plus minus 2 inches. The indicated value of the right multimeter is 12.91 with a 10 volts range and 0.5% of the reading has to be added just a bit to subtract it from the displayed value. The percentage of reading is thus practically minus 0.06 volts. Two digits have to be added to the percentage error. The digits should increase the least significant digits which is the lowest possible place of the reading. In the 20 volts range, one digit corresponds to 0.01 volts and two digits correspond to an error of 0.02 volts. Thus, the total error is plus minus 0.08 volts. If the multimeter is set to the 600 volts range, the least significant digit corresponds to 1 volt, while the percentage of reading does not change significantly. One digit represents 1 volt, and a total error of more than 2 volts has to be considered. Selecting the lowest measurement range possible should yield the energetic effect of least significant digit and gives the most accurate result. As you can see, there are also noticeable deviations while all three multimeters are connected in series and the same current is running through the same or if all instruments are connected to one multimeter. The discrepancy between the neighbor's frequency value and the reading of the multimeter gets highest at the 1 megaohm potentiometer. The variation between the reading of the multimeter and the specified value is not only affected by the accuracy of the measuring instrument, but also by the manufacturing tolerance of the potentiometer. 
Well, this type of potentially misanticipating error is friendly to attention, but what we're really also looking at here is plausible symbol at the display or the middle multimeter. That's an indication that the voltage output or the internal battery reached its lower limit and that it should be replaced soon. With the help of a new battery, we can determine the influence of the battery voltage on the reading of the multimeter. While the old battery is connected to the multimeter, 56.71 volts are displayed. And with the new battery, the battery drops down to plus 12.89 volts. This remarkable deviation is indeed caused by the decline voltage output of the battery. The internal voltage regulation of quality multimeters is usually better, and the voltage output of the battery is a minor issue. Nevertheless, we should never ignore the call for a new battery. At the low budget constraint used in this video, the reading system calculates that the display value of the middle multimeter is outside the limit accurate. Let's discover the influence of temperature on the indicated value. The rear cover of the right multimeter is removed, so that the hot air blower can heat up the electronics. At a temperature of 15 degrees Celsius, we get a reading of 12.93 volts. As soon as the hot air blower is turned on, the temperature is increasing and the reading of the voltmeter drops to 12.63 volts during the heat up procedure. Meanwhile, the temperature is reached 100 degrees Celsius and the sequence in reading goes below 0.3 volts. The temperature stability of this low budget instrument is not so bad, especially when considering that there was no temperature balance during the heat up procedure. Nevertheless, there are some reasons not to purchase a low budget multimeter. An expensive repairion is the poor build quality. To be able to replace the battery, we proceed with a plastic thread as the illusion and the whole rear cover plate has to be removed. After a few replacements, the threads are ruined and the cover can't be closed properly. Furthermore, the insulation of the test tube cracks during usage. Most defects concern the insulation of the multimeter and there is danger to life while measuring high voltages. The cables are very brittle, which is why one of them cracks inside of the test probe, resulting in hot readings on the multimeter. This can become very dangerous if you rely on the reading of the multimeter, assuming that an unknown circuit is not attached to your voltage probe, but you're simply putting in a test strip. The road usage of one device doesn't always map in place correctly causing wrong readings. So it is wise to spend some more money and buy an instrument of good build quality. Why is a cheap one and another cheap one and another cheap one creates a pile of rubbish over time? The main functions of digital multimeters are resistance, voltage and current measurement. Another feature of this device is temperature measurement, used to bore in this video. The test tube has to be replaced by a thermocouple and the road usage has to be set to the temperature function. According to the instruction manual, the multimeter is capable of detecting temperatures ranging from minus 20 to plus 1000 degrees Celsius. Water with some ice has a temperature of 0 degrees Celsius and the multimeter indicates its maximum 0 degrees Celsius. The temperature of boiling water is indicated with 97 degrees Celsius, however that value depends on the atmospheric pressure. A special kind of resistance measurement is the continuity test. 
that you will transmit the PLCD buffer down to a level that is simply is less than 1.5 kilo ohm and measurements can be done without taking as a display. This function is helpful when checking transformers or the windings of the ENT motor. If set to 2 kilo ohm resistance measurements, the multimeter can indicate the voltage dropping of the forward bias diode. The black step screen can be disconnected to the cathode of the diode to the passive and the red step screen to the anode. If the connection is reversed, the signal 1 is displayed. When set to HFC, the multimeter can be used to test bipolar junction transistors. Check out whether it is a CNC or NCN type and locate the base emitter and collector pin, which has to be inserted into the proper holes of the socket and the cross panel. The PC current gain at the test condition of an microampere base current and 3 volt collector emitter voltage is displayed. The arrangement is thus suitable for small signal transistors and I have used this function in this video for the first time of my life. principles of current, voltage and resistance measurements. Finally, I would like to add some warnings concerning the operation of this new multimeter. The intention is to detect the voltage dropping of the device on an active circuit with the load resistance set to PC voltage measurement, but the red test screen is accidentally connected to the PEN upset set. Independently from the selected functionality, both test screens are joined to the low resistance until light of the multimeter. If you are unlucky, a device off the circuit under test will end up in smoke caused by this case in case. The multimeter is tuned against current above 200 mA. Nevertheless, the PC bypass when using the pen ampere track. In an extreme case, the board of the multimeter will smoke up caused by an operator's error. A circuit can also be shortened if the red test screen is connected to the right track and the load resistance is set to current measurement, but it intentionally is to determine a voltage drop. Now, the multimeter is protected against high current by the tube, but probably the circuit under test will be destroyed. Resistance measurements can be done with a device to be tested being connected to an electric circuit. The multimeter applies a voltage to the test screen, which may cause damage of the situated circuit, especially if the device is connected with strong polarity. See nothing but voltage measurements in active circuit cells on a board, like the red board shown here. Be careful, or else you might slip off a pin to the tip of the test screen, which can cause a short circuit. For the reasons mentioned before, it is better that the multimeter do a different function, while the test screens are connected to an active circuit. In general, there is. If you are untrained in adding a digital multimeter, you should never examine circuits connected to high voltages. Never touch blank metal in active circuits, because even circuits with a low input voltage can generate high voltages if the inverters are placed inside of the circuit. Only use voltages up to 12 volts for your own experience to run digital multimeters. short range meter. For voltage divider composed of two digital resistors is connected to a battery with an output voltage of 12.88 volts. For a voltage divider there is a sum of the voltages across the two resistors equal to the total supply voltage. Looks like that is too true for the circuit shown here. We can change 0.91 volts for the voltage across the lower resistor and 1.95 volts for that across the upper resistor, thus 
Der Druck auf der Wolke wird schlauer, wenn die Output-Voltage von Batteries gepresst sind. Ah, da hat er sich jetzt gut dran gewöhnt, wie ich arbeiten kann. Ich arbeite jetzt mit dem Mittelpressing auf der Wolkenseite. Jetzt sind wir da Problem mit Pressing und mit Current Measurement in der Fernseh Clausieren. Jetzt ist der Unterschied zwischen High Voltage und Peak und Peak All. Jetzt hat die Current Run Speaker Circuit Equal und Sum of the Current und Sum Speaker Peak und Peak 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 Right. Once more there is a clear deviation from almost 0.4 milliampere. Now that you have watched the whole video, you should have acquired the knowledge needed to find a solution to the problem. And a look at the process table to find out if your solution is an actually humane. Thanks for watching and I'll be back.